Pedophiles are using grooming techniques to gain the trust. This is the FBI. Pedophiles use grooming techniques to gain the trust of children and unsuspecting parents. Now, we could spend a whole couple of hours just talking about the child brain and the undeveloped child brain and the fact that that child's brain is not going to be developed until roughly age 21 to 25 to be able to deal with, in, in terms of the, of the frontal cortex, in terms of the frontal lobe, to be able to deal with these kinds of stimuli, these kinds of inf this kind of arousal state. Risk-taking control is controlled by the frontal lobe. Impulse control, emotional control, all of these data come straight out of the Smithsonian and straight out of the National Institute of Health, Institute of Health. Jay Guild has developed a massive body of research on children's brains. The children are being assaulted in the classroom, and they are being assaulted using grooming techniques, the grooming techniques that the FBI has defined. The FBI states pedophiles demonstrate sex acts to children. They give them pornography to teach or to give instruction. They teach children how to masturbate, how to perform oral sex, and to engage in sexual intercourse. Pedophiles use pornographic images to arouse victims, particularly adolescents. They lower the sexual inhibitions. They show pictures of other children in sex in order to overcome the children's natural fears indicating it's all right to have sex. Well, now, the education. We looked at some of the educators just a few moments ago, the lead educators. Now we're going to look at some of the education. The following are sanitized child illustrations from a popular sex education book that's used in U.S. elementary schools that such books fit the FBI definition of predatory sex grooming, child grooming, is indeed cause for somber inquiry. Now, it's perfectly normal. Changing bodies, growing up, sex and sexual health. Remember, we've got an undeveloped child brain that is being exposed to these stimuli. Things that pre-Kinsey in the, in the 1940s, 50, 40s, and 50s, would never, most adults hadn't seen. So we're going to teach children fornication through uh, sex education. We're going to teach them heterosexual fornication. Uh, that was the word that was used, by the way, fornication. That's the old word. Um, homosexual, I think. We're going to teach them masturbation. Very important, because if you teach them masturbation, you're able to seduce children much more easily. And we're going to teach them even how to genitally self-exam. And this is being shown to little children as sex education. This is arousal material. This is programming, and that is grooming. You are grooming victims, and you are grooming offenders. And you are doing it under the rubric of institutionalized sex education in the public school system and private, often and parochial. Normalization of pedophilia, pederasty, and the brain reshaping harm by pornography. Sex education. I would tell you that sex education as it is designed today fits the FBI definition of grooming by pedophiles. Lincoln Law banned obscenity in the U.S. mails. What did he define? What was defined as obscene? Any book, pamphlet, picture, print, or other publication of a vulgar and indecent character. That's, those were French postcards in those years shall be admitted into the mails of these United States. Um, there you go. A drug called pornography. The Christian Post said 30% of women are addicted. I think it's a little bit high, but maybe not. 67% of men say they, they look once, at least once a month. It's an epidemic in the church community, they said. And, of course, it, that's certainly the same in the secular world. 51% of pastors say that they're tempted by pornography. 67% of sex addicts 
professionals with a college or graduate <coughs> degree. Uh, businesses, here they're talking about several of them, but they're visiting porn, uh, regularly losing huge amounts of money. 60% of Christian men sought out some form of pornography, they said in the last, I've forgotten what, how long. 90% uh, of 8 to 16 year olds visited porn online, 17% of women are reporting addiction, and let's not forget abortion. When we start to dehumanize people in the way that we are dehumanizing them, when we strip them of their most basic moral attributes, then, yeah, you're going to have well over a million and a half, say, abortions a year, 3,700 a day. Now, in my research for the United States Department of Justice, images of children, crime, and violence in Playboy, Penthouse, and Hustler, which was this little pamphlet was distributed all over the country and all of the 7-Eleven stores stopped selling Playboy and Penthouse. Yeah. However, thank you. However, they're back at it, of course, because we are trying to get the material to people and it's difficult to do it. Missing and Exploited Center. We carefully studied the executive summary. I have a copy right here, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Okay. And it was this little thing that, that caused that amount of trouble. And, um, and give heed to the disturbing implications for the protection of children. It must be read by all the way, in, about all the ways that pornography and violence in media affect the incidence of child sexual exploitation and abuse. Now, you all familiar with Dr. Falwell? <laughs> all right. So Dr. Jerry Falwell uh, had me... Uh, invited me here. He did a lot more than that. It's in my last book. Uh, why is it not a crime, said he, for Guccione, Hefner, and Flint to distribute this? This was in an interview. I was much younger then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was in the pastor study, 1986. Dr. Falwell said, I have it here. Let me read this memo. It's unbelievable. Please. Re and he's reading from the memo. Please read, I have the tape, the video of it. Please, the whole interview. Please review the following relevant portions of the memo from the Office of General Counsel and notify all your staff immediately. And here's what the memo said about this. Please advise all staff that this report should not be duplicated or sent through the mails because the law says to print or distribute this, that's this, is a crime. So, Dr. Falwell asked the logical question, if it's a crime for the Justice Department managers to distribute this, which is a funded project by the United States Department of Justice that I did, why is it not a crime for Guccione, Hefner, and Flint to distribute this, that is their pictures, because that's what my report was about. We found Playboy was the high, had the highest child image year for children being sexualized was 1971.